Hello everyone, Dr. Kevin Zeta with you. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Make sure that you like and you subscribe to my channel because we got new things coming out all the time. This is an exciting time we live in. You're going to enjoy all the videos because God is moving by His Spirit. I'm going to be teaching you how to walk in the Spirit. I'm going to talk to you about angels. We're going to have lots of conferences that are going to come to you. So make sure that you always are ready for what God's going to do for you. Can we stand to honor the man of God, Brother Kevin? Kevin Zadai, welcome to the Skyway House. Welcome to the Valley of the Sun. You know, this is the first time we've had a chance to meet in person, but I, I just feel like, man, we just got such a kindred spirit. <laughs> That's what Jesus will do to you. Amen. Isn't that awesome? <laughs> You're already in the glory. I can see it all over you. Yeah, I'm locked and loaded and ready. <laughs> Let's do it. Who's ready for the glory, everybody? Thank you, brother. Thank you, Pastor Greg. You can all be seated. And, and this is one of those services where you got to tape your hands to the handlebars because you're not going to be able to hold on. <laughs> you know, you got to tape your hands to the handlebars and, and enjoy the ride because the Lord wants to accelerate in these last days. And, and the purpose, the purpose of the Holy Spirit is not so that you can pray in tongues so you can tolerate your neighbor. <laughs> you know, so you get to, you, you know, you, you don't, you don't have to just tolerate your neighbor. You, you've got to find your purpose because if you find your purpose, then, um, you know, there's others around you who's going to find their purpose. It's all about the domino effect. The, the kingdom of God is like a domino. You know, you ever seen where they line up dominoes? Yeah. Hi, I'm Kevin, by the way. I didn't, you know, I just get in the Holy Ghost and I don't even say hi. And I'm sorry. But the, the spirit of God, he's all about leaning on people. He's all about wrapping people up and influencing them. So he'll lean on certain people in a generation because then it's a domino effect. Is anybody following me? Or should I slow down? Because I feel like Perry Stone right now. Okay, so the, the kingdom of God is, is all about advancing. Now, think about this. Paul was in a, in a jail cell, and the kingdom of God was advancing. Because you can't stop the kingdom of God. How many remember Jeremiah? Jeremiah, he, he, he got so persecuted, he said, you know what? I'm just not going to talk anymore. You ever felt like that? You ever feel like, oh, you know what, I got to back off because it's getting, you know, the persecution is getting hot. How many here have gone through the fire? I have. I have. But you know what? I feel, I feel the gold coming up inside of me right now. You know, you, you get purified and the, the devil pushes you into the glory. And then one day he says, you know what? This is really counterproductive. Because every time I do anything, it just pushes them into glory. And he, he gets, you know, I hate to say it, but he gets smart. He gets just a little bit smart, you know, because he's getting old. He's repeating himself. And he's doing the same thing. And I'm like, that's all you got? Because, see, what happens is, is you go into the glory and you, you get out of yourself. You know, I talked about the flesh fry this morning. God likes to grill. He likes, he likes that aroma, you know, and it, we're supposed to present our bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God. And the, the sooner you find out where you end and where he begins, we can just lock and load and get into the, the millennial reign of Christ. We can just wrap this up. But see, you got you to gotta know where you end. And the faster you stop struggling under the Jordan, then he's going to bring you up. So stop moving. Somebody in Germany they raised their hand. They said, uh, they said uh, you know, this crucified life, you know, they're doing it through an interpreter, but they're, this crucified life, you know, how do you know when you finally died? I said, when you stop moving. <laughs> and he just looked at me, you know, and I guess in German it even frightened him. <laughs> I said, Jesus will hold you under there until you have relinquished your will. Woo. Now that fire that you've gone through that you've been trying to get out of, you know, every time something happens, you're thinking of plan B, and then you go to C and D. You're, you're, you know, because in America, we, we can deliver ourselves. It's called credit. You know, it's called, it's called debt. It's called, you know what I mean? It's all these situations, you know. And um, if something doesn't work, there's always something else. And then all of a sudden, you think, you know, maybe I should pray. <laughs> and like, like somebody said to me, has it come to that? So we're going to pray now? You know, because that's the way our culture is. But see, in other countries, they don't have plan A or plan B. Right. 
Some of them don't, you know? And so Jesus in your weakness comes. Now, what does it say in uh, Romans 8, 26? Is it right if I just do this? Do you, get, do you all get nervous when I don't look at my Bible? Okay, all right. Romans 8, 26 in the Passion Translation. Now, here's the thing. When I met Jesus, he spoke with a lot more power than I've ever heard anybody speak. You can imagine, right? He, he just, you know, he, he made all those beautiful stars out there, and he's talking to me. And he's quoting himself, and he didn't seem to mind it. <laughs> and he quoted himself, chapter, verse, told me who he spoke it to. And me being a scholar, I said, you know what? I don't remember that. Where is that? He said, it's, it's in this book, and I was saying it to this person. And I had to come back. When I came back, I had to go and do some research. Amen. Because I thought I knew everything. <laughs> and I found out I didn't. Now, this is, what, this is why the Holy Spirit came. It wasn't just so that you can pray in tongues and get out of your mind so you can tolerate people. You see, the Holy Spirit will cause you to stay in the love of God. Yes. We quote that it builds our faith up. But there's faith, hope, and love. The greatest of these is, oh, I thought it was faith. You'd think so. Faith, hope, and love. The greatest of these is love. You know, it's funny. You talked about in, in 1 Corinthians chapter, I'm going somewhere, by the way. I'm just doing it at a high speed. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, all these gifts of the Spirit. But you know, when, you, when, I, when I went up to heaven, I had to hand those back in. And I didn't even get, get any credit for it. They weren't mine. Oh, boy, did you, oh, did you feel that? But I did get credit for the fruits of the Spirit. That's called character. Did you know Jesus told me, he said, he's more con he said I'm, real, I'm really more concerned about your character than I am your comfort. And I realized, you know, I'm a child of God, and, and, and God disciplines those he loves. Is that a scripture verse? Never hear that voice. <laughs> Anyway, getting back to what I was saying. In 1 Corinthians chapter 12, we see, we see all these amazing gifts of the Spirit. And everybody's aiming for those. Because everybody wants to be identified by those gifts. But the last time I checked, it said gifts of the Spirit, not gifts of you. And your ministry is not the gifts of the Spirit. That's the, the ministry of the Holy Spirit. So how did we hijack that from him anyway? <laughs> Oh, I'm getting drunk. Okay, I love this because, because, you know, when we get to chapter 13, we just want to flip over to 14 because he gets back into the prophecy and the, the goodies, you know. And we skip over 13, but if you look at the last verse of 12, he says, I'm going to show you a better way. And then we flip over to 14 of 1 Corinthians and we, we miss, we miss the boat because the Holy Spirit wasn't given to us so we can get drunk and tolerate people. It's called the domino effect. Do you remember me saying that about four minutes ago? You see, the, the kingdom of God is all about leaning on somebody, and then that person can change a whole generation. Jesus told me, he said, if I can get, now listen to me. He said, if I can get one person to agree with me on the earth, we, that we, us too can do a whole generation and change the routing of the end result of a whole generation just by someone agreeing with Jesus. Has it come to that? So the better way is, is that you pray yourself in the most holy of faith, praying in the spirit, but you also remain in the love of God. And the love of God is not what you think because God is love. And, and love isn't what you think. It's not a feeling. Jesus told me he's more concerned about my character than my comfort. You know why? I've got to carry the glory. We're getting into the glory tonight, but you, I got to tell you how, I mean, you know, I have a manual of an F-16 at home, but if I hand it to you, you can't fly it. And I'm definitely not going to be in the area within 100 miles if you try to. <laughs> I can give you the helmet. I could probably even sit with you at five hours and still crash it. That's if you could even start it up. But see, it's not about just having your Bible or having, it f your, having your fuel you got to know the ways of God. Well, Israel didn't know his ways. They knew his acts. But they sat in with their, their, you know, just like you do when you watch fireworks. But that was not, are you hearing me? That was not enough to carry them through what they went through. Because they ended up dead. And Hebrews, by the way, so I can do the New Testament thing, because, oh, well, that's the Old Testament. Well, how about Hebrews refers to that all the way through the book. 
So I think that that qualifies it for the New Testament. And don't be afraid of that little page between the Old and New Testament. It's, it's just a blank page. <laughs> okay, I'm going to be nicer. I, let's talk about the Noah's Ark. No, no, listen to me. The fruit of the Spirit is the manifest presence and glory of God. It's the character of God. But you got to know his ways in order to transfer that manifestation. You, you all, you, how many in here, how many here, be honest with me, how many in here need money? Right? How many in here need health? Okay. But you know what? You get all that and there's still one thing you need. You need acceptance. You need love. You need, you need to know your value. So there's so many people that have what you need, but they're not happy. But the reason they're not happy is because they haven't found their destiny because they don't have a revelation of God's love. And when I met Jesus, the one thing that about him, and I want to read this to you because the, uh, have you heard of the Passion Translation by, by chance? Okay, so, you know, when I was in college, we were being taught how, you know, we were going to be instructors, taught how to be pastors, you know, whatever. And we were, you know, scholars, you know, and then I met Jesus and I, I didn't need all that. I, I, I like it. But what I needed to know was him, the only true God. And, and like I've said so many times, you know, I was taught, you know, I got to work the word, work the word. You know, I'm twisting God's arm to do something he already wants to do for me. And I, and I found out when I met him that he was working me. I wasn't working him. You got to be kidding. The only reason I'm in existence is because he thought of me and he, he breathed me into my mother's womb. And that's the truth about it. Well, okay, that was the introduction. That's good. This thing is being rebellious, of course. All right, I'll just quiet. That's all right. I don't need this. I, dear Lord, I wrote that book. <laughs> No, I'll, I'm going to quote something out of the Passion Translation. He said, he said the Passion Translation is written from the Aramaic. Don't be scared with that. It's, it's a modern street language of Hebrew, okay? So Hebrew is an ancient language. It's, re, it's really uh, considered dead by some. You know, it's, it's ancient Hebrew. is just, you know, so Jesus spoke Aramaic. And this guy, he was doing translation, I believe, in South America or Central America. And he, had, he got caught up. And the Lord told him, I don't want you to, I want you to translate from now on from the Aramaic. And so he did a, he did the passion translation. But when I read it, I said, this is the Jesus I met. He talked just like that. You know, he was more, it was more colorful and powerful. So anyway, in Psalms 23, you know, you, the Lord, the Lord, you know, the Lord, my shepherd and everything. Well, it, he, he does. The Lord is my pastor. And then when he gets down down a couple of verses, he says this. He said, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, you know that. Fear will not conquer me. That's what he says, okay? And, and then David says this to the Lord. Fear will not conquer me because you already have. How many want to be conquered by the Lord? You see, you see the thing of it is, is you need to be broken. Oh, boy, here goes. <laughs> See, that's why the Lord gave me a job and I worked for 30 years. Because I can just say the truth and it doesn't matter. You see, the thing of it is, is we have been left to, to have decisions that we can make ourselves. And I don't like that. When I met Jesus, I thought, I wish he would just take that away from me. But he won't because he wants us to serve him and love him by a choice of our will. But do you know that, that 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 will, your choice, is either an asset or a liability? In other words, for some, it's very dangerous. Mm. So Jesus decides to lean on certain people in a generation because he wants to influence the whole generation. And the fact of it is, is you are here tonight because of someone else's prayers. And because of someone else who had sown into you, you're here. But you won't know it until you get to heaven. But everyone is going to want to talk to you that's in heaven because they sowed in to the next generation. Each generation sowed and carried a torch. 
And so the thing that I, I noticed, I don't know if you've noticed this, but we, we don't value our heritage and we don't value our, our value. We don't know our value. But the next generation will write about us and we're heroes, but we, we, it, during the time, everyone works so hard. And they, you know, like Jesus said, I sent you prophets, you killed them. And you're going to kill me too. But see, now they're heroes. But you have to understand that people today want to kill Ezekiel and Daniel and all these people that you, you value. Okay, so the next gen generation will value you. But you will not be accepted in this generation because you have the deliverer inside of you. So every generation has a deliverer. And so right now, God, I mean, right now, I'm speaking from heaven, and I'm telling you that you are here because God has chosen you to do something that will be carried over into the next generation. Yeah. Do you understand what I'm saying? So your value, your value is written in heaven, but you don't know it. There's a veil that has to be pulled away. And here's what, what you have to be conquered. Now, that's, you know, that's, that's not a feel-good message. But the thing of it is, is, yeah, I could, I could just kind of slide by and just make it to heaven. But see, the next generation looks at my value based on what I sowed into the next generation. My value is forward-looking. So I was telling, I was telling your pastor, Pastor Greg, I was telling him, I said, a true prophet is taken to the future and then brought back. And then he speaks, but he's speaking where you're going. That's why, that's why the person that you can't even believe, you can't even believe they, every time that somebody comes into town, they get pulled out and get at this great word. And you can't understand like why they get that good word. I know what's going on in their life. Yeah, that's why. Because God's leaning on them. And they might even go out and key your car on the way out. <laughs> it doesn't matter because, see, do, do you understand what I just said? God always speaks those things that are not right. as though they were. So every prophet is not really popular in his generation because he's bringing correction, usually. Well, the next generation will write about this generation, I was told. If, you, if, I was to, if I told you how this all happened, you'd, you'd be all ears. But I'm not going to base everything I say on the spectacular and the supernatural uh, sensationalism of it. Because even if an angel came and told me these things, even if I was caught up, the thing that is, is that you're still responsible for the word of God because there's people in the Old Testament that were looking for a city whose builder and maker was God who was looking for, who believed in him who was an invisible. And he, they didn't have what we have. You know, so I, I can put my headsets on, listen to Kim Walker and be right in the throne room. But Enoch didn't have that. Enoch was too busy writing the Bible and living it out to listen to Perry Stone. <laughs> now, now catch what I'm saying here. Elijah was was making the Bible happen. So he was too busy. You see, in this generation, we are at a standstill because we're just living off of, off of what has already been offered. And I noticed it's always about like when God did this and when God did this, and I remember when God did this, what about when the now, the suddenly start happening and you got a new story every day? What, what, do you understand what I'm trying to say? Do you understand the words that are coming out of my mouth? Because, because the, angel, the angel that was sent that's beside you right now, do you think he was sent to fail? Yeah, it just yield to the joy because that's what it's all about tonight. It's all, you know, and, and I, I'm going to be surprised if, if, I will be surprised if everybody, if everybody doesn't enter in tonight to the joy. And if half this congregation isn't on the floor by the end of the night, I will be disappointed. Not because of me, but because you need to drink of the new wine that's being outpoured. Because it's anesthesia. It's to get you into the glory. 
you gotta, you, it's, yeah, you gotta get over yourself. And sometimes God's gotta get you out of your mind. I can feel it. I'm getting drunk now. My lips are getting numb, you know? That's what he does. He just puts you under. I mean, I, I'm serious. My wife has to put me to the right car because if anything looks like my car from a meeting, I'll be getting into it. Well, thank you for joining me for this video. I believe that it really ministered to you. Make sure that you check out my website, kevinzada.com, and the Warrior Notes School of Ministry as well as on the tab there. You can sign up for that. I've got plenty of courses available to you. I just want to pray for you because the, the Holy Spirit is just telling me that there is a revelation. There's a spirit of revelation that He wants to give you. Like Paul talked about in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 17 through 23, he said, and I'm just going to pray this over you. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you that everyone that's watching has the spirit of wisdom and revelation and knowledge of you. And I pray, Lord God, right now that the eyes of their heart be enlightened. Thank you for joining me. May the resurrection power of Jesus Christ be with you.